Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at a Glacier Bay book project, Rabbit Game by Miyoshi. If you haven't seen any of my videos about Glacier Bay before, what they their mission as a publishing company is is to bring over untranslated um, indie manga art. So things that really are outside of the mainstream, more experimental works, things that are pushing the boundaries of comics in Japan, which is really, really cool because uh, you know, we just don't get that access. And so I've learned over my time as a fan of Glacier Bay stuff that my idea of manga is pretty limited because of what gets translated. Uh, the sense of how experimental they are in Japan was really distorted because I'd just never been exposed to that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate Glacier Bay um, doing that for me. And you can see here, these are really great artists, you know, with real skills. It's just the stories they're telling are a little bit stranger. Um, so these are this, these kids here, uh, they're kind of having like a boring, just like day-to-day -day life. There's this thing about, have you ever eaten a dead rabbit before? I didn't quite get the setup. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I was reading this a little late at night. So the, the setup at first like skipped, skipped over me and didn't set. But what happens is, is this girl's given this game to play, the rabbit game. And the game like takes her into this really weird psychedelic state. And this is where the book really took off for me and like captured my interest more even late at night when I was getting tired. There's just absolutely wild artwork here where you see the character and the rabbit here kind of embedded in these strange wobbly cross contour lines. It's just really strange imagery, uh, totally bizarre with this rabbit popping in here. So here you say this same drawing um, kind of done twice, one with all the squigglies and one with the characters in it. Really cool use of textures, really cool use of the tones all throughout. And then you get an explanation here of kind of what the plot is. These characters are now in this video game world and it says, we're together forever, what? I know everything you're thinking in this place. This isn't a dream either. We're inside Rabbit Game. Uh, Rabbit Game, the game I lent you? Oh, that thing. All of your wishes are granted here. So now these characters who are kind of like not enjoying their day-to-day -day life now have this fantastical space where all of their wishes can be granted. So it's like this digital god box situation. And because they're in this like, you know, simulated reality, you can get all of these just really strange things happening. So I don't want to give away too much of, you know, the other artwork in the book, but I do want to point out just a couple compositional things or pages that are so far out of what I would normally think of uh, getting from a manga that this kind of shows like the type of people that Glacier Bay are publishing. Like a page like this, love it. Gorgeous, gorgeous composition. Totally making use of all the tools of manga but doing something very different with the visuals. Really, really like this right here. This texture piece. I've been playing with a lot of texture and stamping texture and putting texture in digitally and trying to do it physically and both. And so this like um, Memphis design, you know, late 80s, early 90s MTV art. That's the Memphis design group. Kind of this aesthetic that's coming back a little bit. Seeing that put there in just in total abstract is really, really fun to watch someone play with in their art. You know, again, all these textural effects throughout here. Just a really, really visually stunning book. And then fun, this story about them being in this like little game world together. And then this last image here I found super compelling as well. And again, someone playing with like different applications of texture. This looks, you know, like, um, like I said, stamps put onto things maybe tapping at things with sponges, going and doing a lot of stippling, maybe doing it all physically, maybe doing some of it digitally, scraping away at things, using whiteout. I just think, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in here. And even this sequence here where the rabbit kind of takes over and then this this image here, which is on the wall, like kind of comes out of the halftone pixel. Just someone that's doing a lot of interesting uh, things with production design and the different kind of textures you can get art in in art different kind of impact you can get just in black and white different kind of tones you can render um i really like it there's a wide variety you know this is all super crosshatch almost looks like what gerhard did in cerebus this is like toned uh little stamp patterns here fabric patterns so i just think it's really inventive and really cool like i said the story didn't land with me too much 
Um, I, I don't didn't like stick, you know, what the story was exactly about. I just know that they go into this strange, strange world here. Um, and then obviously it ends on a strange note too. So I don't know that I took away a lot from the story, but it doesn't matter because it's just such a cool looking little book. Here on the back, this is probably the best synopsis you're going to get. High school sophomore Kiritani Toru is perplexed by Inaba, his classmate of two years. She asked him, have you ever eaten a dead rabbit? Her sentence is filled with hidden meanings and her behavior playful and childlike. Their mutual friend, Kawamoto, claims her words are meaningless. One day, Kiritani receives a certain game from Anaba. Since that day, he's been haunted by strange dreams. Are they real or fake dream or reality? Or perhaps they're just simply memories of the past. So it is just kind of a very surreal poetic piece. <laughs> And like I said, I just, the story didn't latch on to me because I think it's pretty amorphous. But all of that amorphous story really allowed for all of those beautiful visuals. And you can even see on the cover here, there's just some real play with like production, just the way the different gradients are being used. Um, this, again, here's a texture that's obviously been stamped off of something and then scanned digitally and used as a color. So just a lot of really playful stuff. Uh, this is a book definitely given the color and the like these scans and textures and stuff on the cover. This is an artist I would really, really like to see get cut loose in color. I know people in Japan are used to working in black and white, but um, yeah, this cover looks really compelling to me as well. So very interesting book. As always with Glacier Bay, they're doing the Lord's work bringing over. Well, I guess probably not the Lord's work. They're doing the devil's work bringing over all this stuff from Japan. To infect our western minds with all of these amazing indie indie comic artists from japan so really i think one of the best missions in comics underground publishing today is the glacier bay mission and and please throw them some support if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us there's two ways to do that one is through our patreon we have a couple different tiers of engagement there that you could sign up for get you different uh, access to different kinds of content and any of the money we would get from that just helps us buy the books that we review. So put it right back into other publishers and creators pockets and just help continue to grow the industry and the medium we love. We really appreciate that. And if you want to support Living the Line itself and put some money in our pockets, the best thing to do is to support what Sean is doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of his books now. Sala Niyalo, Path of the Shades by Clarence Doss is a really cool ongoing project that Living the Line will be producing. Clarence is a PhD student from Fiji who's studying the myths of Fiji for his doctoral thesis. And part of that study project is that he's producing these comics. They're kind of like Hellboy where there's these little short stories that capture all of these different mythologies. But then he's using that to wrap the project into his doctoral thesis and then provide educational material where people can come to these comics. You know, they don't have to read his PhD thesis, they can come to the comics and get a more consumable version of the mythology of Fiji. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell, and then you get them.